Amen. You know, but they don't know the secret. Should I share the secret with you? There was a day that I sat in that research environment and I didn't have an answer. None of the standard, and this is why it was a unique work, by the way, none of the standard equation worked. It was a different context. You know, equations are supposed to work, right? Mm -hmm. One plus one is equal to two. But the more I tried to make one plus one two, the more it was becoming five. And I, one plus one is not supposed to be five. Why is one plus one five? And I I remember in Upper Game Reserve because my, my subject was wide life and fisheries management with an emphasis on community development. I remember sitting in the on the ground and saying, Oh God, help me. And it was like my eyes opened. So, why one plus one is equal to five? Ah! I took my pen quickly, wrote it down. It is not by power, not by mind. I saw it. When when we got into the Viva room, what do they call it? Where they would test you. The, pro, the professor from University of uh, uh, of uh, Madubelo University, Zari, immediately went for the jugular said, you have misapplied this equation, Mr. Jiboye. I said, not so, sir. He walked into my trap. He gave me an opportunity to shine. <laughs> he walked into my trap. I said, not so, sir. It is because you have not considered this factor, sir. And then I went into the, into the play and I said, well, because of this factor and that factor and this reason and that reason, because of this, if you connect this to this, you did that to that, one plus one is equal to five. He said, yes, sir, you are right. I corrected my professor. <laughs> you will have more understanding than your professor. In the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Yes, so my, <laughs> So my... My supervisor gave me 74. In Nigeria, if your supervisor gave you 74, ah, ah. <laughs> the culture is you can't get, how do you get 70? That's the culture. My supervisor gave me 74. The professor said no and gave me 86. 74 and 86 is the same grade. But to prove a point, he increased the mark. God will honor himself in your life. God will expand you in all the right places. But when you have a feeling in your heart that God is going to expand you, and I promise you, I will not take too long. What do you need to note? Just like David. David knew that Samuel anointed him. David knew that God was helping him. Even you all of us, what are the things that we need to pay attention to when God is choosing to expand us? When we are called to build a nation, what did David do? And I will quickly run through it. I hope I can finish it. Can you go to the next slide? Whoever is helping you. Okay, I'll do it. Don't worry. I'll do it myself. Be aware of your personal gift that you have discovered through experiences. And that's what we were talking about earlier on today. You are not another man. There's something personally precious about your existence. Can you say with me? There's something? There's something. Personally precious. Unlike the other person. About my experience. David said to Saul, he said, your servant has been keeping. He knew what he was good at doing. He was not trying to do whatever. He didn't say, I know how to trash wheat. He didn't say, oh, I, I know how to produce cumin. He didn't say, I know how to make olive oil. He said, I know one thing. I know how to keep sheep. And they are my father's sheep. Not 
only do I keep my father's sheep. <laughs> I know how to defend them. If a lion or a bear carried off any of the sheep, I will try to have mercy on it. I will go after it and strike it and rescue my sheep from his mouth. That's all I want. I want my sheep from his mouth. But if it now turn on me, aha, I will seize it. I will strike it. I will kill it. There are certain things you must be violent about. I, I don't know how to explain this to you. There are certain things you need to protect and defend. But there are certain other things, if when the enemy turns on you, you need to rise up like, a, like David and seize it and strike it and kill it. <laughs> oh, may God grant you the experience of killing both lions and bears. Amen. So that you may also have stories to tell the next generation. Stories of God's deliverances. Be clear about what is in opposing you internally. Clarity about internal opposition. Is that everybody that you are close to or that surrounds you that is on your side? Is that the next day an evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul? You, know, you need to open your eyes. There may be people around you that an evil spirit has come upon them. Forcefully, forcefully, <laughs> and you see, and it's not only in the school or with the wow wow people that evil spirits come. May God grant you understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of the best places for you to be killed is in the house of God. <laughs> Say, Pastor, what do you mean? Exactly what I said, Nehemiah. You remember what they said to Nehemiah? Don't do what God. Why, why will you bother doing what God has sent you to do? They will. They try to scare him. Jesus. What did the Bible say in this place? He said, Saul, on whom the evil spirit has come forcefully, was doing what? Prophesying. So, ah, they are prophesying in that place. Oh, they are prophesying. You better be careful. A man on whom the evil spirit from God is resting forcefully. What did the Bible say he was real? I would not say more than that. And why David was playing there as he usually did. Saul had his spear in his hand and he hugged it. So it doesn't matter. All you need to do, ask yourself to know whether an evil spirit has come upon his soul. So first thing is very simple. Is this person interested in me having abundant life? Finish. Finish. That's the solution. Here is a guy prophesying at one minute, and the next minute, he was trying to kill the fellow. Ask yourself, this fellow who is prophesying. I is prophetic in that action, interested in my eternity. I is prophetic pronouncement interested in in my in my promotion to the place where God wants me to be. That's all the question you need to ask. Is this person interested in me becoming what God wants me to be? Not only what he wants me to be, not only what I want to hear, because there are many dead levels of prophetic. You can see it here. <laughs> May God grant you understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. And I can go into practical application of this in the workplace, in you know, in the way you relate to your bosses. In the way you interact with people, there are people that the evil spirit is upon them and God is intending to destroy them so that he can promote you. You understand what I'm trying to say? And if they are not destroyed, 
they will create a, a, a situation in which you will not be able to be promoted. So you need to be aware and be ready to protect yourself at any time. You need to become an artful dodger. <laughs>